Hi friends! Today I'm going to show you how I made this pumpkin pendant. So if you'd like to see how I made it, just keep watching. So let's start with the materials that we're going to be using. This wire is from Rio Grande Jewelry Supply. They come in one pound spools. And I have 21 gauge half round dead soft copper wire here. And here I have 20 gauge square copper wire, also dead soft. I will be using some two millimeter beads from Rio Grande as well. These fit on the 20 gauge square copper wire very nicely. And I just love the little accent that it gives. Um, you can also use colored beads if you want to use green ones, um, whatever you'd like really. I will be using my tweezer nose pliers from Zeron and also flat nose pliers from Zeron as well. And I will have everything in the description box below. I will also be using two types of flush cutters. These ones I use just to cut basically everything that's not going to be seen. And these ones are my final kind of cut that you will see. So these ones with the little curls at the end that you will see, I will use these because they give such a beautiful flush cut. Um, it doesn't have any pokey, jagged areas like these ones give. Um, these are pretty expensive. They are, I believe, $65. And these ones are around 10. Um, you do not want to use these on super thick gauge wire. The most I would use it on is this 20 gauge 18. You're risking um, chipping the inside and getting little deflections and it's it'll ruin these pliers and you really don't want to have that because they are pretty pricey, but they are worth it. And we will also be using this pin vise. And what this will do is it will twist the square copper wire and it'll give a beautiful pattern. Um, you don't have to use one of these, you can just use your pliers, but I find that this gives a nice uniform look and it also makes it a lot easier to twist the wire in my opinion. And last but not least, I will be using this wooden dowel, which is the same size as my cabochon, and that will help me to make a perfect base to have the stone fit into for the pumpkin pendant. I really love this set that I got of these wooden dowels. It comes with all these different sizes and it really, really helps to shaping your base for your cabochon to fit into perfectly. If you don't have these in your tools, I would suggest to get some because I think they're only like 10 to $12 and they last a really long time. I've had these for over a year and they're still looking pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and start off here with our 20 gauge square copper wire. Um, and I went ahead again and cut these into eight inch pieces. I have three of them. And I have my 21 gauge half round dead soft copper wire as well. And so I'm gonna take this, I'm holding it down with my finger here, and I'm just going to start wrapping it around. And you want it to be pretty taut, you do not want it to be loose and you don't want these to overlap. So here I have three, four, five, six, and that is good. And here, so this one that I was holding, it didn't really, it's not as tight as I would like it. So you can either pull it taut or you can unwrap it a little bit, which I always do. That's just my personal preference. And you'll have a little extra that's wasted on both sides, but I always like to have something to hang on to. So I'm going to take my Tronics flush cutters and I'm just going to snip these ends. And these, they just do such a beautiful job at getting just the cleanest flush cut ever. And you can get into really tiny areas, which I really love. So let me get this out of the way. And then we're going to use our flat nose pliers and go ahead and crimp that down. So we have that in the middle, roughly the middle of our design here. And we are going to go ahead and start twisting these base wires. So I, for this pumpkin design, I like to twist this one and this one, this one and this one. This back one you will not see, 
but these two you will. And I think you don't have to do this one. I just think it gives it a little nice extra touch, a little extra sparkle. So actually going to untwist this a little bit and fit this in here. I don't think I untwisted it enough. There we go. And then you twist it back up and then you just use your fingers and you start twisting it and you get this really beautiful effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other three wires. And make sure you twist them all about the same. And I've been using this pin vise for so long that I don't always have to twist and untwist this. I have it just enough tension where I can slip these in and out and twist the wire. All right, so there we have it. So this is what our base looks like so far. And now we are going to go ahead and get the dowel out. So now I'm gonna get the dowel and I'm going to place this in the center with my thumb and I'm gonna use my two other fingers and I'm going to bring it around. Hopefully I can show this, there we go. And also you wanna make sure that your area that you cut is on the inside. I'm trying to get this to where I can show it on camera. So I have it here and it's being a bit difficult. So let's see, let me move my camera a bit up. So this is what you have. You can check it with your stone, make sure the base is looking good. And for these pumpkin pendants, I do not like to have a super tall bail. So I'm going to try and get this as close to the base as I possibly can of the dowel. Also keeping in mind that we are going to be tucking wires in there. So you can't have it too, too close, but you want it close enough. Use my pliers just a little bit, kind of get that bend. I'm always very gentle not to mar up the wire. So that looks really good. I really like how there's just that tiny bit of area in there, but still enough for our wires to tuck in. So I'm gonna take this off and that is looking pretty good. So the bale is in the middle. The wires are looking really nice. And now we're gonna get our half round wire and we're gonna start wrapping this up. So here we have our base and our half round wire. And what I'm going to do is hold this together with my fingers. That way these three wires are flush against three, these three wires on this side. And we can bind them together to make the bale. So if I can get this. Straighten that out. And I'm gonna hold this with my finger. Make sure that they are all nice and next to each other, nice and neat. That first wrap, I'm never worried about it. Not looking too good. I usually unwrap that one and get rid of it. That's just my preference. I like things to be perfect, so that's why. So we have two. And what I'll normally do is I will get my flat nose pliers and I'll just give it a little squeeze, make sure that it's sitting nice and flush. And I will continue to wrap that one more time, straightening out my wire. So we have four wraps right there. I'm going to unwrap this one because it doesn't look very pretty. I usually only do three wraps for the bail. Not sure why the light is changing either. I'm sorry about that. 
So that's what that looks like. And I'm going to push this down with my pliers. Oops. Try to get it as close to that base as we possibly can. Okay, so this is what I have so far. And then I'm going to take, this is the back. We are going to take this wire right here and we're going to tuck it into this little area once we cut it. So I'm gonna take my flush cutters again because this is just a really thin wire, so I don't mind using these. Taking my tweezer nose pliers and just going to tuck that nice in there. There we go. So we have that. And I'm gonna just try and bring that down a little bit more. And now what I like to do is I like to start opening these up just a little bit, not very much, just the very back ones and the front ones and leaving the middle. This middle one is going to be our bale. So we have that so far. Can Make sure our stone fits nicely, and it does. Make that a little bit more taut just by squeezing on it. So that's perfect. And I'm going to open up these sides, just using my nails, being very gentle. So that looks really good. You can either keep the stone in there, which I know it's gonna fall out, so I'm gonna take it back out. I'm gonna bring these down just a little bit more. And then I'm going to wrap, oops. I'm going to wrap the bale. And I'm not gonna have the, the bale very high, because again, I don't want a very tall bale for my pumpkins. So I'm just gonna wrap this around. Try to get this wire as close to the base as possible. And we wanna make sure that the flat side of the half round wire is the side that's touching the other wire. So sorry if I'm hitting the camera and it's going in and out of focus, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is just continue to wrap this probably to around right here. Okay, so now I went ahead and wrapped my bale, and now I'm taking my flat nose pliers and I'm going to gently squeeze this down. So I went ahead and measured my bale right now, and it's measuring at about 16 millimeters. So I'm gonna take this tail end and I'm going to cut it off. That works. Couldn't see it. All right, making sure everything is nice and push down. Okay, so this is what we have. And now I'm going to stick the stone here and I'm gonna bring this down. I found that when I bring this down without the stone inside, this tends to get misshapen. So I'm just gonna keep it in there even though it's awkward. You don't have to, just my preference. And it's a lot easier for me to do this when I'm not on camera. So I'm gonna bring this down and through. And this is not exactly where I want it. So I'm gonna take my tweezer nose pliers and I'm gonna gently help it along. And you can also use bail making pliers as well. Might be a little bit easier. So I'm just going to get that into the position that I want it. Maybe a tad bit more down. Don't want to hurt my wire, so I'm trying to be gentle. Okay, so that's looking good. That's what I want. And now we can go ahead and secure these wires in a few minutes. 
So before I do that, I'm going to bring them to the back here. And I'm going to start opening these up a bit more. And then I'm going to get my tweezer nose pliers and I'm going to gently just start pulling and wiggling. And this is my technique on how I make my pumpkins. If it doesn't work for you, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. This is how I do it. I haven't had a problem and I like the way it turns out. So again, just gently wiggling. It gives that nice rounded effect. And you can do the same thing to the back to secure the back. So I'm just gonna gently grab and then push those back wires down. So that's what the back looks like. This is what the front looks like. And I'm going to now secure these wires. I'm gonna make them a bit more even. And I'm gonna to go to the back here. And I'm going to cut these. Okay, so here I have my flush cutters again, and I'm gonna cut them fairly close and just have enough just to tuck under the base there. Take my tweezer nose pliers, and I'm going to tuck these under. Just gently pushing as I go. And there's that. And now we can start playing with these wires and making the vines for the pumpkin. So with mine, I like to start off making a swirl, so I'm going to do that. I just use my fingers all for my swirls. I do not use any bill making pliers, anything like that. Just gonna use these and push it down a little bit. And let's see. Been adding a couple beads on to the end here. Before I secure it, so I'm gonna add four beads. You can add however many you like. This is just my preference on what I want for the piece. You know what? I think I'm going to have the beads on this inside one instead. Oops. It's a little difficult to see. Push those up and I like the way that looks. So I'm gonna bring this to the back, bring this one to the back, and I'm actually going to snip the bottom one here and I'm gonna leave that long one to come around to the front and I'm gonna tuck it in this front area up here. I feel like it'd be more secured doing it that way. So again, I'm going to take this back one, tuck that under, take this front one, tuck that one in and under, and then with these two, we can make more swirls. So I'm gonna make another swirl here. And 
then hmm going to make so this one is actually longer which I like and this one's not as long so I think I'm actually going to make a swirl over here before I secure it to the back just as a little added touch bring that around Cut it. Be very careful with your stone if it's close because you do not want to chip or break it. Then I'm just going to gently push that and make sure that is nice and tidy. So here I'm going to actually Get my pin vise, and I'm going to twist this wire a little bit. That looks good. I'm going to bend that up, bend that down, bend this around like that. And then I'm going to make some swirls here. And I guess I did forget one tool. I forgot that I'm going to be using my round nose pliers from Zeron as well. So then I'm going to just make a little swirl here on the end. Fairly small. Just like that. And I'm going to cut that with my flush cutters because again, these give a really beautiful flush cut. And take my flat nose pliers and make that nice and flat. And if you had longer wires, you can do more swirls, go crazy if you want, give it some more dimension. I'm just going to twist these here. Round that wire. And then I'm going to go ahead and secure this guy. So with my leftover half round wire that I had from doing the bail, I'm just going to snip that off. And this is probably a, an inch and a half. Could be smaller. Just gives me more room to be able to grab it. So I'm going to stick that in that little hole there. And then I am just going to take my tweezer nose pliers and I'm going to secure it. Hold it gently with my finger and pull. And I'm going to do three wraps around this. I can get it. There we go. Should probably move those beads before I end up knocking them over because that seems to happen to me quite a bit. I'm going to push this down. And I'm going to take the other side. I'm going to do three wraps as well. So once I've done those, then I can go ahead and cut my wires really close on the inside. That way they're not sticking out. Cut this wire close. And then I will take my tweezer nose and just make sure everything is nice and secure. Nothing sticking out. And that's my pumpkin so far. This design works really, really well on smaller stones. 
you can add four wires instead of three if you want more of those little um, divots that the pumpkins have or to mimic the divots that the pumpkins have. So this is the final result after I oxidized and polished this piece. I hope that you all love it and that you find this tutorial useful and helpful and I can't wait to see your designs.